We are less than 24 hours away from Turkey Day. Glutton Fest 2022. I hope you're stretching out those sweatpants. Run it back. It starts now. Run it up to run it back. Yeah. Run it up to run it back. Run it back. Run it up. A uh, good Wednesday morning, day before Thanksgiving. This is Run It Back. Joined, as always, by Stadium Insider Sham Sharania, Chandler Parsons, who just will get to you in a second, and Eddie Gonzalez, co-host of the Etcetera's podcast with KD. Uh, we have to just jump right in. That that parlay yesterday, when you said Simmons triple-double, we chuckled, right? Well, he ended up with 11, 11, and 7. <laughs> So we got to get to it. And by the way, the Sixers had none of their big stars playing, and yet somehow, some way, managed to beat this fully loaded Brooklyn squad. Uh, it was the big return for Simmons to Philadelphia. So we'll start with him, even though he's on the losing side of things. Were you guys impressed with what you saw from Mr. Ben Simmons, Eddie? Uh, no. He only scored <laughs> eleven points. I, I like that he I like that he had some energy to him and you know he's he's toying with the crowd and he's shushing them and it's in the shrug on the free throws. But come on, like this is a number one overall pick. This is a max guy. He gave you eleven points, eleven rebounds. That's great that he didn't fear the arena and, and thought the booze were too quiet. But uh hmm. yeah, you you gave up twenty eight offensive rebounds last night. You lost to a team down four starters. Uh, yeah, nobody played good. No, nobody played good on that team, uh, including Ben. So, no, I wasn't impressed. Kevin said the other night after his performance uh, against the uh, Grizzlies, uh, I'm not excited. This is what we expect from Ben. So, yeah, this is a little subpar. We expect a little better. Yeah, I mean, th- this isn't the outcome that I saw happening, but clearly I'm not good at predicting these type of things. <laughs> um, listen, this this is this is who Ben Simmons is. It's uh, watching him last night. He still plays kind of hot potato with the ball, and it kind of worked out the first three plays of the game where he got quick three assists. But honestly, it kind of looks like he's just kind of getting off it. But he's you know he's got good instincts, and he found guys cutting, but. 11, 11, and seven. And, and we're talking about a guy who, yeah, he looks like he has more energy that like that. That's not the, that's not how we should be talking about a franchise multi all-star guy, but you know, I, I just, how would he ever score 30 or 40 in a game ever again, the way he plays now? Like he, he can't, he can't create his own shot. He, he doesn't make free throws. He can't shoot at all. Like I just can't ever see him scoring 20 in a game, like with 25, 30, like how is he ever going to go off? But I mean, yeah, like I, I thought he handled the crowd. I honestly, in my opinion, the crowd to me wasn't that crazy. Like maybe because mm. I wasn't there, but like I didn't, it didn't seem like so unruly. They weren't throwing stuff. Like they, it wasn't, I didn't, it, it didn't seem that gnarly to me, to be honest with you. But um, it definitely helped Ben kind of ease his nerves getting off to that good start. But this is this is a horrific loss that just can't happen if you're the Nets and you're fully loaded, you're you're healthy, and you go in and lose to this depleted team where Shake Milton kind of goes off in the fourth to kind of close the game. Like this, this was a, this was a bad look. This is a bad look for the Nets. I'm glad you mentioned the crowd because that was obviously something we were all anticipating, uh, and it seems to be the overall consensus is, eh. Let's hear what they had to. I think too much time. I think too much time went by. I mean, we're talking. Like, they were almost more rowdy, in my opinion, when he didn't play. I mean, like it's like, it was at the beginning, right? You had your your intros, which. Yeah, but this just like if if my eyes were closed, I would just think this was any away player. I agree, the actually. Lineup. Yeah, I do know, agree. That's the thing. He was treated yep. like any other player. I was there last year in March, and he was booed very much more significantly. And like they were <laughs> cursing at him. Uh, it it was it was definitely rowdy then, way more than it was last night. Yeah, like yeah, I just did LeBron did Philly fans to like be throwing things on the crowd to be <laughs> eaten. like they said there's extra security there. Like they did I don't say know. that. Yeah. To me, this this was like not even like a playoff atmosphere. This was this was I was disappointed because Philly fans go hard, and I feel like right? maybe maybe too much time just went by. Maybe they weren't excited because none of their guys were playing, and they thought they had no chance of winning. But this was kind of weak by the fans, honestly. Yeah, I'm old enough to remember LeBron going back to Cleveland in 2010, and what, like there was like genuine fear that something insane might happen in that game, or even Kevin going back to OKC and. 
the cupcake shirts and the, the line of sheriffs behind the bench and and all of that. Th- this was just a game. This is this was you know he had some fun with it and and you know gestured to the crowd a few times, but this. Disappointed in Philly. I th- their reputation is they booed Santa Claus and they they barely booed Ben Simmons. <laughs> also, it's kind of hard to boo Ben, who is just constantly coming off the ball. So even if you boo him as he gets the ball, he's running and doing a handoff, and then you then you stop booing because now Joe Harris has the ball. It was it was a little strange, but they got the win, so I guess it mattered yeah. enough. They might have also, been surprised by themselves by the win. Quite the frankly. MJ shrug after a free throw was nuts. <laughs> I, like I was gonna let it go. If you're making a three, it's a free throw. Yeah, like he didn't, break, he didn't break someone off and hit a crazy step back. My man hit a free throw and shrugged. <laughs> uh, that was but nuts. Can, I, I feel like the bar is very low for Ben Simmons, and he is treated with kid gloves. Like if he does anything that's remotely part of his job description, there's a, a part of sort of the talking head community that's like, oh, great, he's on track. He's had, dude. Like at some point, it, it, the the standards have to be the same as they are for everyone else. And I mean, come on, the My show. <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, I, 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 no. I try to like understand his situation a little bit, but yeah, he's definitely being handled with kid gloves. I think by everybody, the media, the team, the fans, everything. It's all like, okay, we'll bring them along. Okay, we'll bring them along. I think it's in some at some point it, it's. You know, the Nets are spiting themselves with the way they play. If you look at last night, he he was back in the starting lineup, uh, back in the starting line with Nick Claxton, which obviously presents its own issues. And it was the it was the Ben Simmons show again. And he had the ball most of the game. He relegated Kevin to, you know, a secondary role. And and, and you saw that with Kevin's performance. You know, he only took 14 shots last night. Seth Curry took 12. Uh, yeah. So it's you, you're you're taking the things that made you successful against Portland and against Memphis and against all these other teams where you kind of showcase Kevin and he was the centerpiece of your offense. And now you're stunting it to turn everybody into standstill guys as Ben does dribble handoffs. It's, it's an issue. Like they have to address that somehow, or they're going to have results like this a lot. And I, and I will say as a player, when you're like, if I'm on the nets, it's, it's hard to go into that arena last night and not let your guard down a little bit with who is playing. Like this is a classic case of, Oh, we can kind of just tie our shoes, you know, to tip off and we can go out there and our talent is going to overcome. And then on the flip side, you have guys like shake Milton, you got guys like the Anthony Melton that are waiting for this opportunity that are showing doc rivers. Like I can do more. I want to do more. Tobias Harris finally had his chance to go from the fourth guy to the number one guy and he hooped and it worked. So like these guys too, they have that opportunity that they want to take advantage just as much as the nets come in there thinking they're just going to roll these guys. Uh, speaking of Tobias Harris, he had 24 last night. His name is always sort of in trade talks whenever they start to come up. Shams, why or will he be prevalent still in those conversations? He he will be because that's really the only guy that Sixers have as an asset that they can trade. They've traded away their draft picks, whether it's it's in the James Harden trade. Uh, they, they've really put their chips on the table already. They've got Tyrese Maxey. They want him to emerge. And when you look at this roster, they got Joel Embiid, James Harden, Tyrese Maxey. Those are your top three options. So for a guy like Tobias Harris, who's you know in year, he's got two years left on his deal, seventy-seven million. Um, he he's playing. He played last night, and there are other teams that he can go on where he's a number two, a number three, maybe even number one option on different nights. He said last night in the, in the post-game interview, like it felt good to be uh, the number one option to have that many touches that he had last night. He had to get reacclimated to it. And I think th- there was some truth in that because that's, that is definitely an opportunity that he probably feels like he deserves. He feels like his talent deserves. Uh, but on a, in a lot of moments and on a lot of nights this year, he's spent in the corner um, and, and really away from the ball because there are other players uh, that, are, that are taking up a lot of the offensive usage rate on that team. Yeah, and a guy like Tobias Harris, he can kind of do it all. He's talented. He can shoot. He can score. He's great off the block. I can't help but picture in like a team like Dallas. Like, how good would this guy be next to Luca, who desperately needs that number two guy? And Dallas is a team that I can see making it, making a move. But yeah, I'm happy for him because he's always kind of been that second and third fiddle. And obviously, this is just one game, but he was hooping. He kind of and he took over late, and he was getting to his spots and. 
this was exactly what he needed to do being the guy and it's a different kind of load it's a different kind of conditioning it's it's he's getting all the reps he's controlling the offense he's doing a lot of isos and and he was very efficient i think he shot 10 for 20 or 10 for 21 last night uh this this was a very impressive game kind of showing philly and showing the world on on you know national tv that i'm i'm more yeah i think you know it's interesting watching this team last night obviously their talent depleted but to me they're a harder team to guard when they have all those variables on the court they had seven guys take at least eight shots last night they passed the baton to the different obviously had Tobias and you had Melton and and, and you had George Niang putting up some buckets and, and and staring down Kevin and and all of that they're a much different team without those guys obviously you want Joel you want James and you want Maxi out there but the movement they had off ball the energy they played with the way they crashed the boards the the pace they played with pushing the ball up the court that's just stuff that does not happen when those guys are all on the court doing what they do look James is just going to dribble the air out the ball it is what it is uh Joel's just going to have elbow touches and hold it and and take his time it's just is what it is so yeah they they weren't a better team last night they're a tougher team to guard and prepare for and and the Nets pay for it on the offensive glass and all the threes that the Sixers hit and uh I, I warned Chandler like it would right? it, it would it would not Chandler? shock me to watch these guys just get all, lit up and they did. You were too sure. In all, too in sure. all fairness, in all fairness, I didn't know Yuta wasn't playing when I made these predictions. Wow. <laughs> Great point. Great That's point. Fair. That By is the way, fair. But seriously, Eddie, Eddie, what's going on with your boy Joe Harris? Because we gotta get more from him if they're if they're gonna do anything. Because he's getting open he looks. A, he, he had a pass go was it one right for eight from his three? legs. Yes, one for eight. Um Joe, Seth, and Patty were four of 16 from three last night. And then Kyrie was also two of eight. So that's six of 24. That's how you lose games, my friend. That's how you lose games. Those are not good numbers. Uh, yeah, that's the thing. You can never be too sure. That's why this league is amazing. Uh, there were other games that happened last night. The second big national TV game was the Suns and Lakers. Uh, it was a 115-105 win for Phoenix. But this, of course, is what everyone's talking about today. Patrick Beverly pushing DeAndre Ayton, it's another one of, um, well, what many people call cheap shots that Patrick Beverly has become known for. Do you guys think that this was a cheap shot, Chandler? I mean, this whole play was kind of weird from the jump. I, I, I don't know what D Book was doing. Like, he clearly fouled Austin Reeves. He And then he even started kind of talking shit over to, over him. And, and, and then DeAndre Ayton, who the kind of previous plays was getting into it with AD, and then he had the dunk and kind of barked at AD. But was this dirty from Pat? Yeah, for sure. But this is exactly what he's there to do. This is exactly what he should do. Pat is a goon, and this is his role. And if I'm <laughs> Anthony Davis, I'm LeBron, I'm paying for his fine, and there's definitely going to be a suspension coming. Oh, wow. But this is this is exactly what you want. You don't want him to hurt anybody. You don't want him to take crazy cheap shots. But what is DeAndre Ayton doing here? You're standing over one of our players after he got slapped in the face. You guys are up. It's the end of the game. Like, I, I honestly, bravo to Pat Beverly because this what? is the value. This is the value that he. This is the value that he has. It's exactly what he's there for. And D Book saying, "Oh, push people." He has no problem pushing people in the. He'll punch you in the face. So like he, this, <laughs> he is a goon through and throughout, and he is not scared of anybody. He tried to fight the ref when the when the ref ran up on him last night. <laughs> he he. This was definitely oh, dirty, but this is what he's there to do. So I don't mind it whatsoever. Huh. Yeah, yeah. Is it is it dirty? Is it a cheap shot for sure? Uh, but that's Pat Bev. That's what he's supposed to do in that situation. I had no clue what DeAndre Ayton was doing. Austin Austin Reeves doesn't look like he's harmed a guy in 10 years. I don't know why they were picking on him. He got right. smacked in the face. That's enough. It wasn't like his little tension was with Reeves. The game wasn't even necessarily that chippy up until that point. It was just really weird. I get what Pat Bev did. I get what the Suns being defensive. But, yeah, I mean, that's the point of Pat Bev. He, he was 0 for 2 last night. He had 0 points. He had 10 rebounds. So shout out to Pat for that. But this is what he's there for. He's to to be the enforcer, to stir stuff up when things get like this. Um, but, yeah, it was just weird. It was just weird all around, especially from the Suns, to be honest. Well, okay, so from the Suns, Devin Booker had something to say about this Pat Beverly moment after the game. 
Pat needs to stop pushing people in the back, man. Push them in the chest. That's all I got to say. Face. Like, we <laughs> it's just, I mean, it's not yeah, an issue. Like, <laughs> like I said, he's not he's not scared of anybody. So yeah, he has done that a couple of times. But like, Pat will he will fight you. A lot of these NBA guys are fake tough guys, and you know, the, all the hoopla. Pat Bev is not one of them. Do we yeah, expect look, him to be suspended? I mean, is that is that coming? I, I think so. I mean, wow. he, yeah, he like, got I, he got one game for the Chris Paul play. So I mean, this was very very similar. Shoving the back. So, I mean, there is precedence there. There's no question. All right. So we yeah, think look, yes. I, 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 I trash Pat all the time. I think he's one of the worst players, worst starters in the league for sure. But he, what he is not is he is not a, a, a punk. He is not scared to push a guy in the face. I mean, he's been doing it his whole career. Mega star, bench guy, uh, number one overall pick who <laughs> my, maybe doesn't want to be on his team in DeAndre Ayton. All of them can get it, and they will get it. And so, yeah, that was – I don't agree with Book there. Wow. Okay. I feel like you guys are going against what a lot of people are saying today. I find it very interesting. Um, on the other hand, Anthony Davis is doing quite right. <laughs> he is okay without LeBron on that floor. 37 points, 21 rebounds, five blocks, five steals. Uh, I, I think, obviously, the question is going to be, and I think we're going to start hearing it more and more, he seems to really thrive when LeBron's not out there. So is that good news or bad news for this Lakers team? Eddie. Um, it's bad news. It, it, it is what it is. Let's just call it what it is. He looks way better right now without LeBron on the court. And when LeBron's on the court, he commands the ball. He commands the offense. And that just is what it is. That's not changing. It's, it's not going to change for as long as LeBron plays. That's the style he plays. I think it's very interesting the synergy AD has with Russ. Russ serves him up a lot throughout the game when he's on the court. Uh, obviously AD and LeBron can work. They've won a title. They can figure it out. Uh, but yeah, he, he looks, I mean, he's putting up wilt numbers. They, you, you <laughs> can't argue against that at this point. He looks amazing. And I do wonder, you know, this is like a deeper combo, but we're so accustomed now to superstars teaming up. Sometimes the best version of these guys are on, on their own, right. on their own Island. And, you know, maybe that just means you're a five seed every year, Anthony Davis. And then that's the best you can do. But man, could you imagine him the last couple of years with his own team centered around him, we, we, we might've been having seasons of this. Yeah. He's, I mean, he's, he's dominating and he looks comfortable and he's, he looks like a man playing against boys. They're just throwing the ball to him. He's going to work. He's playing aggressive. He's playing violent. And, and LeBron is the one guy that I feel like should be able to adapt when he comes back. Like AD is not doing anything drastically different besides just getting the ball more and being more aggressive on the block when he does. LeBron can still space the floor. LeBron can still find him and hopefully make the game easy for him. But yeah, listen, if they get LeBron doing what he does with AD playing like this, they have a chance to turn this around with Russ coming off the bench and, and with the pieces they have. I mean, they're still not a good team, but but they should be building off this because – or looking at whatever trade options they have. I don't know if Sean's got any scoop, but <laughs> AD, is, is, AD is taking a step forward. And I mean, Russ has been solid off the bench. Lonnie Walker's looking solid. Austin Reeves has been solid. So I don't think they have enough talent or shooting or depth to kind of be a real contender. But this version of Anthony Davis on their team obviously just makes them so much better. So on, on the on the trade front, there's really nothing uh, new. The Lakers have made some more calls on some shooters, but there's really nothing new on that front, uh, I'm told. But as far as the game, I mean, there's no question when LeBron James is on the court, he's going to command the ball. And so how much of a focal, a focal point effort are they going to make to go get AD involved uh, you know, early in games? Because that was a concern early on in Darvin Ham's tenure with the Lakers was AD's touches early on in games, sustaining uh, him having the ball in his hands. And I think they really have no choice but to do that when LeBron James isn't on the floor. But now that he's going to be back here eventually, uh, they, they need to keep giving AD the ball. Well, allegedly, LeBron will be in the game uh, here in San Antonio on Friday night. So um, I will have lots to tell you about on Monday, guys. I will see it all up close and personal. There was uh, Kings, the beam team, seven straight wins. Uh, but this was a moment. John Morant trying to jinx Malik Monk at the line, who ends up, by the way, missing clutch free throw a couple seconds later. But uh, Chandler, see, I personally love this as a fan. What do you think about it? 
the yeah, talking I mean, and the this, chirping. This is just this is just kind of silly banter, trying to get into his head a little bit, trying to ice him a little bit. This just, you know, this this bit him because obviously it came right back to him and, and he didn't knock the free throws down. But I don't see anything wrong with this. Uh, this has kind of happened a couple of times this season. This is this is just a distraction tactic that you know sometimes works sometimes doesn't this one just kind of made morant look a little silly because it came right back to him but i don't hate it i think it's you know any any way you can get a guy off his rhythm or get a guy thinking before he shoots a free throw usually could help uh but you know monk knocked him down and that was huge and the kings are real the kings the kings are rolling man i'm i'm they got a really good situation over there i know i don't want to see guys this is the moments like this are why I say we should just have the mic up league pass all Thank year. You. I'll pay whatever it is. It's fine. <laughs> uh, everybody wants to have their mailman doesn't deliver on Sunday moment. And that's cool. I like it. It didn't work. <laughs> like, Ja, you also got to handle business on the other end. But right. yeah, it's cool. I, I want like clearly Malik Monk wasn't bothered. DeAndre Ayton was earlier this year. I wonder what they told Ja on the way to the stripe because, yeah, moment clearly got to be clanked that one. Pretty ugly. But yo, De'Aaron Fox, don't foul Ja Morant on a three again ever for the rest <laughs> of his career. Please. Almost just some yo, advice. Th- thankfully for us, they would have went to overtime and they would have hit the over. And then I would have been able to place sole blame on Chandler for blowing oh. our, our parlay. <laughs> but, <So close. laughs> but but unfortunately Ja missed. So here we are. It is a pretty innocent smack talking moment I, I feel like if i'm gonna have smack talk i want it to be a lot more personal maybe something about moms uh or loved ones but i ask you like chandler already chimed in on the sacramento team we're gonna talk about this until they either turn the twisting turn here where they're not as good or all the way to the end of the season but could you see them as a contender i know the west is what it is and i know we've seen some of the teams that are always in it struggle but this team right now looks legit are we crazy for even thinking that I, you no, know what's like, crazy? Could, yeah, I'm looking at the West. There's really no like elite team in the West. Like they're deep. There's a lot of good teams. But when I'm looking, like Portland is going to fizzle off. Utah is a team that we thought was going to lose, who's now is up and coming and winning games. But like <laughs> Denver loses to Detroit last night. Memphis is banged up. Like Clippers are a lot worse than I thought they were going to be. Like there's really no, there's no Milwaukee. There's no Boston. Like the Cavs would be the best team in the West right now. Like there's the Warriors are having their own struggles. Like, so they have a lot of good teams, but like, yeah, there's no reason that these Kings can't, you know, keep going and keep becoming one of the better teams in the West. And and once they add, you can tell last night to close out that game, they have never, they haven't been in a lot of winning situations. They almost blew that game last <laughs> night just simply because they have no experience of how to do that. They don't have the Iguodala. They don't have those vet guys to like be there. And once they start adding guys like that and they add a few more pieces, these guys are going to be tough. Yeah. yeah it's happening? always funny. <laughs> It's, it's always funny uh, in the NBA when a three-quarters court trap works, and it was working against the Kings last night, and they almost fumbled that game about four different times. If Malik Monk misses one of those free throws, then maybe they do. But, yeah, I mean, are they a contender? Contender is a broad term, but like Chandler hmm. said, the, the West is all out of whack. Like, the, the Jazz are at the top of the standings. The Kings are a three seed right now. They're the third best record in the conference. If you look at the standings, too, the ten teams that are above the playing line – those are pretty much what we expected from playoff teams besides the Warriors. Somebody's going to drop when, when they get it together. Uh, but look, they're a team that's built for the playoffs. They're a team with guys who have playoff experience. They're a team with a dynamic isolation scorer in uh, Darren Fox. And then what Demonis Sabonis provides as well as a post presence and an elbow guy, he's they're built to have success in late, late and close playoff games. Could they win a series? Yeah, they they get the right matchup in the second round. You, you never know; they could be in the conference finals. But they're legit. They're legit. They have the best offense in the league for a reason. They light it up out there. I love the idea that Shams at some point may actually be having to chase down leads on them making moves to get better, not sort of <laughs> unleashing pieces. Which no one, I mean, no one could have predicted. At least not like this. Uh, on the other hand the Minnesota Timberwolves. They, they're they having some real weird internal struggles. We know about the booing of Rudy Gobert. He did not care for it. However, his coach, Chris Finch, on the fans booing, and I quote, if you don't want to be booed, play better. I mean, it, it seems fair, Chandler. Like, if you have a head coach that tells you that, 
How are you reacting? Are you motivated or are you mad? I mean, no, I don't, I don't, I don't need my head coach saying this to motivate me or to play better, but it, it's pretty, it's pretty common sense. Pans are fashionate. They want what they want. What's <laughs> best. They want you guys to play hard and they want us to win games. But if I'm Rudy Gobert and I just, you, they just traded everything to get me. I did definitely a little rubbed the wrong way that my head coach said this publicly, like kind of didn't get my back and went kind of against what I just said when I'm just a new guy here, I'm trying to figure out my role. It, it would bother me, I guess a little bit. It, it definitely wouldn't motivate me, but I mean, listen, they've won four in a row. The, the anomaly to me is, is D'Angelo Russell. Like this guy's a hooper and he's just not producing. Like I thought he would. You definitely feel like there's some inner friction and beef with Edwards and towns. Um, and again, the trade that they made for Rudy, everybody's going small, everybody's stretching it out, everybody's shooting the three, and they decide to go the exact opposite and go two bigs and turn Towns into this kind of finesse four now, which has worked at times, but it was just kind of a weird move, in my opinion. But I, I mean, listen, this is uh, sometimes you have team meetings, you have film, you have everything in house. And it's clearly not enough. So maybe this is just a motivation tactic by Finch. Finch is a great dude. I don't think he meant any harm by this, but like as a player, I think, I, I mean, I don't need my coach saying that. Like I realize that it's pretty common <laughs> sense. Yeah. Dude, I do think it's wild. Interesting that the head coach said this about Mr. Five first round picks. Uh, that's fascinating in its own right. I'm with Chandler. Like, I don't know how productive it is, but the fact that he's willing to basically throw him under the bus and say, yo, quit crying. I kind of love that as a fan watching them and, and watching them semi and pro, but they have won five in a row. They do have talent uh, as nature heals in the Western conference. We just talked about out of whack. The, the, the standings are, they should start to win some games and climb up the conference just a little bit, but yeah, just, I think it's funny the coach said this about who he said it about as well. So it's something to watch over there. You know, that that might be the sneaky blow up team. Even but yeah. the problem is they've invested so much in their future, it kind of can't blow it up. I will say this team is young and they're immature. They kind of they're not handling adversity very well, but thank God they're in a small market because they have a lot of topics and issues that are kind of getting swept under the rug with all this Lakers and Brooklyn stuff, but if they were in a major market, they would be in the headlines a lot more and kind of be getting exposed more for this, but they definitely have issues here that, that aren't normal. We're not supporting yeah, they, Popeye's they, this is, they, they need it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This, this is the time where they've got to turn this around. And, and when you look at this roster, it's not like you're going to move Anthony Edwards, Rudy Gobert, you just, you just traded everything for. So the question has become D'Angelo Russell, Carl Anthony Towns, where's the fit level moving forward? But uh, this is the time to, to turn it around. I don't know if them going back and forth in the, in the media is going to be <laughs> productive for them, but I, I think th th this is that stretch right now, 15, 20 games, where they've got to see what they have. Uh, and it's also, interesting. All, all, their, all their issues are self-inflicted against. Like a Kyrie right. Irving, all their beef, all the, it's all them talking out of line, all them going to the media. Like, just be quiet and hoop and think, like, Towns, uh, Edwards, I don't care if you guys don't like each other. You guys are the future of this team. You got to figure it out. You're not, it's, you're not going anywhere. So, like, they bear down and stop talking so much and just bringing on all this negative news. It's weird. <laughs> it's all internal. Like, none of it's external, which I find yeah. fascinating. And now Eddie's got me thinking that Hinch never wanted Gobert in the first place. And now that's going to be like a big story. Oh, I see what you said there. I was reading between the lines. <laughs> uh, we're going to take a quick break. But when we come back, is anybody healthy on the Clippers? And what should the Nets be thankful for? We'll be back shortly. Run it up, run it back like a running back. Yeah. She known all over the map because she make it clout. What a short song on the skin. You have got to be kidding me, Shams. All right, so Clippers play the Warriors tonight. A little California showdown. This is becoming almost too much of a routine. So what? what is, um, I see your tweet here, but what's the latest on Kawhi? I feel like we just got him back for five minutes. What's the problem? Yeah, he, he, he missed a month, and then he sprained his ankle late in, in, in the game on, on Monday. And uh, I, he said post-game that he was fine, but he, he is listed out tonight. And along with Paul George and Luke Kennard, and this is, a, this is a team that's been dealing with a revolving door all season, starting with Kawhi Leonard, at times Paul George. There have been different players in and out of the lineup. Ty Lu has spoken publicly just about how difficult it's been with, with the rotation uh, of, of the lineups and guys in and out. 
And, and there's a reason why this offense is now among the bottom three uh, of the NBA, even lower than the Lakers uh, as of yesterday. So uh, a lot of that has to do with they just have not had their guys on the court all the time, especially, you know, Kawhi Leonard, uh, when he's been on the court, hasn't been playing his usual minutes and his usual role overall. Uh, so it, it's tough. They're going to be down multiple star players in a national TV game tonight. Even lower than the Lakers. How we have fallen. Uh, Chandler, how, by the way, I'd like to officially retract my MVP Kawhi Leonard prediction at the beginning of the season, <laughs> just, just due to the fact that we're not going to see him enough. So that's fine. But, uh, but Chandler, tell me what you're thinking about this Clippers squad. I mean, how worried are we at this point? I mean, we're pretty worried. I mean, Kawhi Leonard is making a lot of money and just doesn't seem like he's himself. Um, like you said, even when he plays, he's not very productive. Um, it's it's just, it's not working for whatever reason. And they're still the fourth seed. Listen, I think Paul George is playing very, very good. Um, they have a deep roster. They have a capability to be a very good defensive team. I just think the expectations kind of came so high with them, and we expected to see a fully healthy Paul George and Kawhi Leonard. And PG's done his thing, but the, the, Kawhi, the Kawhi Leonard thing is, is listen, we, injuries are no joke, and they're tough to come back from. You see guys do it every single year. See what Clay is going through. Clearly, this injury that Kawhi has is serious, and they're monitoring him. I think the guy makes $45 million a year, and he's just not on the court. He's not on the court enough, and when he is, he's not playing very good. So I'm super concerned. I love the fact that there's still hope, and the West kind of is wide open. But this isn't the way that, you know, they saw the season starting off. But, you know, they're still right there in the thick of things. Yeah, you're talking about a 31-year-old Hall of Famer that this franchise is, you know, completely uprooted themselves to to showcase and to have be as their centerpiece. He's averaging 10 points a game. He's he's only played five games this season, came off the bench for two of them, and he shoot he's only shooting 42% from the floor. So yeah, you absolutely need more. Are, are do they are they treading water? Are they making it work? Yeah, they're eleven and seven. They're they they have the second most wins in the conference. They're winning regular season games. But that's never been the goal for this franchise. They want to make it past the second round for the first time in franchise history. They mm. want to win a title. That was the entire purpose of Steve Ballmer buying this franchise and going all in with built, not bought, and you know, concrete over whatever, whatever the catchphrases <laughs> were. Uh, they they want to win. They don't want to just win regular season games. And they're going to need Kawhi to actually be functioning and healthy. And nothing over the last two years has told us that he can be that. Obviously, I hope that he does and he bounces back and he can be the Kawhi that we all know and love. But, yeah, you have to be concerned right now. Yeah, it feels like one step forward, five steps back for this team. Shabs, I would say put your phone away and enjoy the holiday tomorrow, but I know better. <laughs> Thank you, uh, and we will see you Monday. Have a great weekend as well. And, guys, Happy we're going to – we're gonna. All of you. Oh, that was such a moment, you guys. Let's hug virtual uh it is it's thanksgiving which means you're supposed to give thanks if in case you forgot uh we're gonna do which teams and players what should they be thankful for and we start with eddie what nba player should be the most thankful this season bj tucker should be thankful for that contract and that player option because <laughs> he has not scored in six nba games Oof. me and him have been just as productive as each other <laughs> now i'm not guarding kevin durant on an island and i'm not you know but, yo, to get to go out there and just throw up six shots and not really worry if they all miss, that's fun. That's great. And so, yeah, he should be very thankful right now. <laughs> has he, has he really, he's not scored in six games? Six, six games, that's, my friend. That's insane. <laughs> that is, he hasn't scored yeah, since Columbus Day. <laughs> <laughs> that is not a stat that you want to attach to your name. Chandler, who are you thinking? Which player should be most thankful? You know, I'm thankful for Lori or Lori marketing should be very, very thankful. <laughs> We're um, also thankful for Lori I'm Markkinen. also thankful for him. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, this was a guy that had a bunch of hype coming in, uh, you know, a lot of talent, a lot of size, and it, he just couldn't figure it out in, in, in Cleveland and Chicago. And now he finally got this move, was supposed to be on this rebuilding team, and he was kind of just in the trade, I feel like. And this guy has turned himself into a real player. This guy has a very good chance of making an all-star team. Uh, he's doing it all for them. He's carrying the load. He's he's giving this team hope. Um, and, and I would be very thankful that just kind of this trade happened and it worked out 
very good for him to kind of showcase the kind of player he is. That's a good one. I like that one. Eddie, it's time to turn to the teams. Which team should be most thankful? The New Orleans Pelicans should be the most thankful team in the league right now. Huh. And they should just be thankful that the Lakers exist and gave them their <laughs> draft for the next few years. Uh, yeah, they're standing in line to maybe get this guy. They have the third best chance right now. I think fourth after last night. Uh, so, yeah, they, they have that 14% chance to get that number one overall pick. Plus, they built a nice little franchise out there anyway. They end up with Zion. They have Brandon Ingram. The, the Lakers just keep stinking it up. We talk about them every day, and I hope every day a Pelican is tuning in going, yeah, just just keep pouring it on because we need them as bad as possible. A Pelican is tuning in. Uh, Chandler, for you, which team? Yeah, I'm the Cavs, and, and they are the most thankful for the New York Knicks for not adding Quentin Grimes into that Donovan Mitchell trade because that has been nothing but greatness for Cleveland. It's been great for Donovan Mitchell. Uh, this guy, Quentin Grimes, he's, he's a solid player, but to not throw him in a trade to get this superstar talent and who's now kind of benched and barely playing for the Knicks who are struggling, struggling mightily, uh, this couldn't have worked Evergreen. out better for Cleveland. They have a stud now. And basically that was all because the Knicks didn't want to add this, this guy, Quentin Grimes in the trade. So be very thankful for the Knicks. I like that one. It's also, I can't believe anyone's saying that out loud. Uh, final round fan bases, Eddie, starting with you, which fan base should be the most thankful? The beam team, the Sacramento yeah. Kings fan base. They have not seen a playoff game in that city in 16 seasons since Ooh. Kevin Martin was the future of their franchise. Uh, and now they have a good thing going out there. They probably, hopefully, if all things work out, going to see some playoff basketball this year. And look, they're just having fun. They're just having fun. I see Matt Barnes t made the call last night to light the beam. It <laughs> created this, this social media moment. Uh, they they got to be loving it out there in my hometown. So, yeah, that fan base for sure. Oh, that, that, mm. that beam has won me over. I, I love it so much. It's so <laughs> simple. Uh, I almost crashed my car because I was staring and smiling at the beam. Okay, be careful, uh, Miriam. Yeah. We don't want that. <laughs> but yeah, you're right. It's a lack of a beam. Yeah, uh, I, w I wonder I wonder when the first lawsuit comes, when the beam catches right. someone in the eye. <laughs> it's too bright and beautiful. Uh, yeah. yeah, no kidding. Because I sometimes I forget. It, it, they got that thing going up pretty high. Chandler, for you, yeah. fan base, which one should be the most thankful? Uh. It's the it's the Mavericks and it's for Luka Doncic because they would absolutely stink without him. He does everything for them. He's in his fifth year. He's been All NBA three times. Um, he kind of helped just kind of transition from the Dirk era to the Luka era without really rebuilding. Um, he's a generational talent. He's he can do it all. And like I said, they would be pretty lost without him. So also be thankful for the Hawks that they traded Trey Young for him on draft night and kind of did that that switcheroo there. But yeah, the Mavs fans should count their blessings with this cat. Thank the what Kings for taking more of a Bagley as well, because <laughs> right. I mean, it just goes back. There's so many origin stories that could have been. I love it so much. The what ifs. Uh, when we come back, these two are going to walk back some of their hottest takes that we've had so far. And should Steph retire night, night, all that when run it back returns. Run it back. Run it up. Run it back. Run it up. Run it back. FanDuel Sportsbook has an awesome World Cup promotion going on right now. If you bet on Team USA to win when they play England on Friday and they end up with a loss or a tie, you will get a refund in free bets. That's an offer we will not be walking back, unlike ba -ba -da -da, Chandler and Eddie. It's a new game. We're calling it Walk It Back because it's much nicer than, oops, that was stupid. Uh, you guys have shared some pretty spicy <laughs> takes. By the way, I'm with you. I'm with you on some of these. So, we're uh, Eddie, we asked you on opening night for your best bet to win MVP. Here was your answer. But the guy I think who could actually, in a way, shock us and get it is Steph Curry. He's probably going to okay. be on the best team in the league. He's going to be the best player on that team. He's going to score a lot of points. He's going to have great numbers. Okay. Steph Curry was your preseason MVP pick. Are we walking this back? Uh, no, but I'll say I was really wrong about him being on the best team in the league. <laughs> He's clearly <laughs> not on that team. <laughs> He's on one of the worst. Uh, but, yes, yeah, Steph 32 points, shooting 52% from the floor. He's been a monster. So if they ever actually win some games, uh, yeah, that might be our MVP right there. 
Uh, but yeah, they they look pretty awful. I can't lie. So I'm not walking right. back my pick. I'm just walking back the Warriors being good. <laughs> wow, I'm impressed. That's a that's a, like a, a double down, Chandler. You also no, don't say anything <laughs> yet because I want to I want to see the actual video when you said the following words. Here's Chandler. <laughs> What if All I threw right. out Carl Towns out there? Somehow, some way, the Minnesota Timberwolves are a top four or five seed. He's their best player, and he's built for the regular season. They add Rudy Gobert, and he's going to put up gaudy numbers. If he can put up 28, 29, 30, and 10 and 12 and four assists, I like Carl Anthony Towns as the long shot MVP this year. Huh. Chandler, are we walking that back? Well, yeah, uh, I'm walking that <laughs> one. I hate to, I hate to give up on him so quick, but I'm walking it back. He is averaging five assists. I said he'd average four, but he's not their best player. I think Anthony Edwards is. They're not a top four sheet. They're barely in the playoff hunt. Uh, this could not have went. This could not have went more wrong for me. I took long shot a little too long uh, yeah, here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I thought maybe the whole stretch four thing would work with Gobert. They were excited. I thought, you know, D'Angelo Russell would still be a valuable player. Uh, and I was completely wrong, and I would like to walk it all the way back. All right, Chandler's walking it all the way back. I, of course, am walking back the Kawhi thing. But really, it's because of availability, not because he all of a sudden is an awful player. That would just be silly. Are there any other hot takes that either one of you wants to walk back? Oof. No, I'm shooting 100 percent from the floor. I'm pretty sure I'm right about everything I've said on the show. So. That's, that's what I figured. <laughs> I figured that's besides what besides saying. any parlay pick that we've ever. Oh, <laughs> yeah. no. Like those those are now just a joke. Those, we're all yeah. going to be fired because we can't figure that thing out. Yeah, uh, convince me is next. We had the World Cup version yesterday. Today, Eddie, you're going to convince me that uh, each each NBA team should be allowed to add what alumni or former player to their roster during the playoffs. I like this. Could you see the jostling with like, yo, let's ask LeBron to retire a year early, but we'll bring him back in April. Like, let's just, oh. let's just do that. Uh, I, I like, That'd be awesome. I'm all for the strategy of this. Uh, I do worry about, I remember they had like the old timers game at the all-star game and somebody got hurt. I do worry about somebody oh, stretching just a little bit. And then we have to carry a, a 42 year old guy off the court because his Achilles a just popped. But I think, look, if, let's try it. Let's see some collusion in the league and make this happen. <laughs> yeah, I wonder where you'd have to have like the qualifications because I mean it'd be awesome if the Bulls just trotted Michael Jordan out there just for the sake of fan morale. But yeah, I don't expect him to do anything, <laughs> which is really weird to say out loud. Uh, Chandler, <laughs> we're going to talk about Steph's night night. This little thing that he does T convince me that that can only be used now against top tier teams, and you can't be busting it out against say the Rockets or the Pistons. Yeah, it should because those teams are already asleep. Like it's 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 almost it's a, wow. it's a it's a it's a form of it's a form of bullying when they do it to when he does it to those teams and it's really just rubbing salt on the wound. So I agree. I think it should only be against a team with a better record than you because it's just point blank rude to do it against the Rockets. <laughs> And then when he added in a little jump, a jump sleep too, just a little more sauce on the wings there. It's again, just, uh, it, it's, it's too much. And, and the, uh, those teams already have no chance before they even get to the arena. So only do it against good teams. Yeah. It feels like he's fighting down, punching down when he does it that way. Doesn't have it's the same. Bullying. Yeah, yeah. Pizzazz that we want it to have. Uh, this is a world cup adjacent question. Eddie convince me that flopping should be a technical foul. Yes, please. Let's let's please get this out of the game. I hate when guys pump fake and then dive under you and go like this. <laughs> like, yeah, let's get all this out of the game. Uh, a tech. Th this was to have almost most of these guys. Stop. Joel Embiid would still do it. James Harden would still do it. Uh, LeBron would still do it, even though he thinks he doesn't know how to flop. But a lot yeah. of guys would have Marcus to take Morris this out the would repertoire. Still do it. Marcus Smart, my and bad. We, yeah. It, and we still get to see basketball. I'm all for it. I'm I'm all for it too, Chandler. I think that I hate flopping. I hate it in all the sports. Uh, on the technical foul side, there's something else though. It's the hanging on the rim. So convince me, Chandler, that they should actually be these guys should be allowed to hang on the rim after a monster dunk. 
Yeah, I mean, first of all, this it's it's safer. You're not going to land no. on the player that you just dunked on. Um, it only hurts yourself because while you're hanging on the rim, they're taking the ball out, and they're you know you're not getting back on defense here. But part of the one of the some of the attraction of a good poster is kind of swinging on the rim and putting your nuts on someone's head, and without <laughs> and without being able to hang on the rim, you kind of eliminate that exclamation point on the on the banger there so i i think you should be allowed it only hurts yourself it's safer for the player and like i said it's it's a little more sauce hey i did not have genitalia in faces on my bingo card for today's show but i appreciate chandler always convincing us of something else uh eddie this one is the hardest one we've ever had convince me that cranberry sauce is the best thanksgiving food oh it's not Oh. It's it's not. It's obviously <laughs> mac and cheese and deep fried turkey, but nice. cranberry sauce gets a bad rap. As long as it doesn't have the actual cranberries in there, it's pretty good. So <laughs> wait, I'm it's sorry, not the best, but <laughs> it's 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 underrated. Like I'll, oh wait, I'll, so you're I'll, just I'll, referencing that on my plate. That canned stuff. You just want the canned jello y Ugh. looking. Yep. Ooh. Just a little, just a little couple slices of that on my plate, and we're all good to go. Slices of gelatin <laughs> is disgusting. That is no, there's no arguing that. Uh, up next, I, we're, we're going to try again. We're going to give you our best shot at winning you some money. <laughs> I'm already going to laugh now. We'll be back. <laughs> run it all. Run it back. Yeah, yeah. Run it all. Run it back. Run it all. FanDuel Casino is giving thanks to their loyal customers by hosting a Refer a Friends giving event that's happening right now. Here's how it works. Today through Saturday, November 26th, any FanDuel Casino player can refer their friend by sending them a referral link. After your friend wagers 10 bucks or more on FanDuel Casino, you'll both get a $50 bonus and one shared entry to the Refer a Friends giving sweepstakes for a chance to win a share of $50,000. Check out the FanDuel Casino app for more details and be sure to follow FanDuel Casino on Twitter and Instagram to see if you and your friend are one of the lucky winners. So we are, uh, we're at that part of the show now, the on the fly parlay part of the show. Before we can get to today's probable winners, uh, let's take a look at how last night fared. It, last night had the potential to be a big one, right? But we, and we came kind of close. So, Oh, I lied to you. We're not going to, we're not going <laughs> to, we don't want to show it because it's embarrassing for all of us. Needless to say, it was a little closer than we thought. Ben Simmons was actually closer than we thought to the triple double, which seemed outlandish. But that being said, it didn't hit. Okay. Let's try again. Teddy. 50% from the floor ain't bad, Chandler. It's not <laughs> bad. We didn't win all us no fame. money, but it was all a couple fame. buckets out there. Right. <laughs> well, I mean, I like your optimism. I'm hoping it carries into today's Eddie. What do you have for us for your two legs? I got the Pacers. They're home dogs against the Wolves. They won eight of the last ten. They won five in a row. I really like the Pacers team. I watched them smoke the Nets in person. I'm going <laughs> with them. I do not believe in the Wolves at all. I'm sorry. Okay. So uh, probably bet the Wolves because I just said that, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> at least we're giving, like, the asterisk. Uh, and then your second? Also riding the Kings to the to the top of the beam, to whenever the beam stops going off. Kevin heard a revenge game. I need it. Uh, let's have it. Ooh, mm. a Herder revenge game. I like that. All right, Chandler. Five, five and a half is a lot, by the way. I feel like it guys. is a lot, right? It's kind of disrespectful considering. Take, hmm. take the points. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, mine is the Nuggets. Minus three and a half at Thunder. They came off a bad lot. They cannot lose to the Pistons and the Thunder back to back. I expect them to kind of pounce on them. Um, again, it's a team that's trying to lose. They got to get this one. And then Spurs and Pelicans, I like the under. That's a lot of points. Um, I like this game to kind of be slowed down a little bit. And uh, you know what? I honestly don't like any of these. So they're probably this is probably the one that's going <laughs> to Like well, yesterday, I was actually complex. weirdly <laughs> confident. A couple of these other picks I really believed in. This one, I hate. So, like, this is probably the winner. You think this will we, be the over? Won. I don't know. We I mean, okay. win when there's not a show tomorrow to to post and brag about it. That that sounds. Well, about we'll just right. we'll just post repeatedly. Bet twenty, oh. win two forty five. This has to hit, guys. It's the Thanksgiving holiday. If everyone's in a decent to good mood, something's got to give here at some point. We will get this right. It might not be today, but we will. Uh, guys, happiest of Thanksgiving to you all. <laughs> Sweatpants for everybody. Guys. We will see everyone on Monday morning. Enjoy the holiday. Enjoy the weekend. See you next week.